Hi, I'm Kendall, the president of BSU. And I'm Tashana, the vice president of BSU. And, and welcome, welcome to, to the, the transcript. transcript. This week, the crew goes behind the scenes of the spring musical, investigates the Flat Earth Society, and looks into a recent rally, the peer perspective polls on students, pe on students' favorite teachers, and Hamped Up talks about spring sports registration. Stay for the end to hear a bit about our club. A mass shooting during the parade celebrating the Kansas City Chiefs Super Bowl win left 22 people, including eight children, injured. One person was killed, and three individuals are in custody. The incident unfolded despite the presence of over 800 police officers. In other news, local business owner Garang Patel has received approval to build a three-story mixed-use building at 81 Maple Street in downtown Florence. The structure will include 10 housing units and commercial space, potentially for a restaurant. I'm Ellie here in Andani, and thanks for watching. Dog, cat, window, balloon? Welcome to Hamped Up. Hi, and welcome to Hamped Up. Spring sports registrations have been open since February 1st for anyone interested in partaking in a spring sport this year. These spring sports include baseball, softball, boys and girls lacrosse, track and field, as well as other sports. The concussion test that's included in the registration process has been recently changed from only needing to be retaken every other year to being required annually. We spoke to athletes and Dave Pru, the athletic director at NHS, to learn more about what the concussion test will do to prevent head injuries and how students can register for a spring sport. How I stay organized uh, going into the seasons with all the registrations for sports. Um, you know, students register through family ID, they have to get their physicals in, they have to do a concussion test every two years. Um, I just keep a big spreadsheet of everybody that signs up and where they stand with everything. And then as registrations come in, I send updates to my coaches and really work through my coaches to make sure that they are staying on their athletes to make sure that everybody's cleared for day one tryouts. I do find it tedious. Not only, I know it's a necessary process with the physicals, but it still takes a lot of time to uh, register in total and like get the money through. The purpose of the concussion test as one of the health requirements um, is to create a baseline of um, a baseline result in the concussion test so that we know how the athlete performs when not having a concussion. Then if there is a concussion to that student athlete during the season, um, once they've cleared the symptom checks, we can do the concussion test as a post-injury test and compare that to the baseline to see how their cognitive functioning is after the injury. And we want to make sure that the athletes are back to their baseline test results before they go back to playing on the field. I think what I find most difficult in the concussion test is how long it is. Um, it's like all these little things just get really bored and you have to just be completely focused. You don't have to take the whole thing again. The most difficult part of the concussion test, I would say, is the different, like remembering the things from like earlier in the test and then having to remember it later in the test. As a, such a difficult test just on your brain, um, it gets kind of, it'd be kind of nice as a reward to know that you passed it immediately. Um, so I think it's definitely not ideal that you don't find out right after taking it whether you pass or fail. I don't find it that frustrating when I don't find out whether or not I pass or fail the concussion test. I've, again, I've never really had any problems with not passing. Um, I think it's pretty like straightforward and it doesn't really require a lot of time. Thanks so much for watching. Make sure to register for your spring sport. The Flat Earth Society is an organization that believes the Earth is not a sphere, but a flat disk. Despite the model being scientifically disproven, the Flat Earth Society still has members all around the globe. 
We spoke to people on both sides of the debate to learn more about this theory about how our world looks. What made me doubt the globe Earth model was that I had looked at just about every conspiracy I could think of. And so I said, OK, I'll shut this thing down in a weekend. And I looked at it from a court of law perspective. Well, everyone's going to lean on NASA because they're, the, they're the, the only real source. They're the only ones that have actually gone outside of this world and looked back and said it was a globe. But the more I looked at it, the more I realized that all those boxes of information that NASA had were basically just empty cardboard containers. It's all just been stagecraft. And if NASA's wrong and all the physics and engineering behind it are wrong, then the world isn't what we think it is. The agenda of flat earthers is very similar to other conspiracy theories. In fact, it is specifically conspiracy driven. It only differs in magnitude. It is the largest and, and most grandiose conspiracy imaginable, which would require every single government on Earth to be in on it, um, every single aerospace company, telecommunications company, uh, all literally all physicists, astronomers, geologists, etc., uh, which is part of what makes it so absurd, is that practically half the global population would have to be in on the conspiracy, which makes it untenable. I think that it is really um, easy to dismiss um, flat earthers as being, you know, kind of out of touch or disconnected. Um, I think that that is a little bit of a problem. I think that that being skeptical is a valuable trait. Um, I think that questioning what you see around you is something that people should do. Um, I think that denialism is something different. Um, I think when you get from the point where, you know, a scientific process where we collect data, we look at evidence, and then come up with a conclusion based off of that, uh, to me, someone who's kind of more into a conspiracy theory is looking for, has already settled on a conclusion, and you know, looking for evidence and disregarding anything that doesn't lead directly to that conclusion. The biggest misconception of being a flat earther would probably be that we are as dumb as rocks. Flat earthers are so ignorant that they don't even realize how ignorant they are. That's probably the most common misconception. It's like, are you kidding me? I, I some of my best friends, which are all flat earthers, are extremely articulate, extremely smart, extremely motivated and dedicated. It's the only thing we debunk to children. We don't talk to children about JFK or 9-11 or Pearl Harbor or the moon landing or that crap, but we'll, we'll put a globe in their classroom, put it in the corner of the room, they'll leave it there for 12 years. That's incredible conditioning right underneath the American flag. Thanks for watching. If you would like to view an extended version of this segment, please see our YouTube channel. Welcome to The Peer Perspective, where students express their thoughts on a variety of topics. In this week's survey, we asked kids about who their favorite teacher is and why. Here are some of the most popular answers. My favorite teacher was uh, Miss Murphy uh, because, I don't know, she was just very nice and very accommodating and made it, the classroom very comfortable. My favorite teacher is Miss Dollar because once when I stayed at, with her after school, she gave me hot chocolate. Uh, my favorite teacher was Mr. Bernal. Uh, he more felt like a best friend than a teacher to me. I love Finkel because he's just really funny and he's bald. Um, my favorite teacher is Mr. Finkel too, but not because he's bald, because he's really funny. My favorite teacher is Mr. Lucy because he gave me like six chances to pass this class. So I have two favorite teachers and my first favorite teacher is Mr. Littlefield because he is really funny and he always helps me with work and he's very supportive. My second favorite teacher is Mr. Baldwin because he's also very supportive and he's a funny person and he teaches me a lot. Thank you for tuning in. Remember to complete the form our team sends you so your voice can be heard. See you again soon. Hello, I'm Amy Grimaldi. This year the NHS Musical Department is putting on Freaky Friday as their spring show. Today we'll be taking a look at some of the behind the scenes action along with talking to many people who are making this production possible. <laughs> This 
this year's musical is different than other musicals I've worked on in one big way in that we have a pit. We have a full orchestra to play the music along with the cast as they sing and dance. The hardest part of being the music director is having the separate pieces, um, having such different parts, and to bring all of that together and remembering that there's an orchestra and dance and all of those things that all have to sync up and match up um, makes it hard to rehearse and especially hard for the cast members to really learn it. Um, the musical this year, Freaky Friday, definitely differs from the two previous. The two previous musicals, Mamma Mia, I did my sophomore year, and Rock of Ages, I did last year. They're both jukebox musicals, so they run on a format of using music that's already been written, that's popular, and creating a story around that. Freaky Friday is a traditional musical where they created a score and a script all surrounding a central story. Costumes this year for Freaky Friday, we haven't fully planned out anything yet. We're going to do that a lot after February break. Um, and But we're really going to be focusing on 90s, 2000s era clothes. Um, this year we actually have a makeup and hair crew, so we get to do some fun stuff with that hopefully as well. My favorite part about doing costumes is probably getting to interact with kind of everybody in the show, getting to interact with other costume people, other crew people, and all the cast. It's very fun. I've been part of the NHS musical since my freshman year, and I'm a junior now, so this will be my third show with NHS. I feel like this show is different because it's definitely a little more upbeat than some of the other musicals. Like, all of the music is, like, it's very contemporary musical theater, which is just, like, a generally, like, a different vibe. It's a lot campier than other musicals I've done, um, you know, but it's still fun. People should come see Freaky Friday because it is a wild and crazy ride and there's magic. It's, it's going to be such a fun show. Um, it's funny. It's sad. It's it's really fun. I want you to come and see Freaky Friday because it's awesome and we are going to do awesome and we put a lot of work into it. So I feel like... It's valid to come see it after all the work we've done. Come see the production on March 14th through the 16th. More info is available on the NHS Theater website where tickets will be sold. Thank you for watching. Since the 80s, bands such as Sonic Youth, The Pixies, and Dinosaur Jr. have held an impressive local punk scene with a thriving community in Western Mass that continues to this date. We interviewed one of the bands performing, Robber Robber, to get a more in-depth look at the community and the culture of punk. So yeah, uh, how we would define our music. Easy answer is um, like post-punk, which is like taking a lot of elements of punk and referencing punk a lot, but then with like sort of different variations on it, like less definitely classic. And we also have like a lot of kraut rock influence, especially on our more recent stuff. We take influence from like a lot of a lot of different genres. Um, I don't think I don't think we ever tried to like pick a genre. That was definitely something we avoided was setting out to make a certain genre. What inspirations do you draw from? Well, all sorts of stuff. Um, Tom Waits. Lots of Tom Waits. James Brown. James Brown. James Taylor. James Taylor. Harry Nielsen. Huge. Yeah. I love, like, well, while we're writing and, like, thinking about writing, I love just, like, thinking about a single moment that I really love in, like, any genre of a song, and then I'll, like, go back to that. We try and stay away from, like, being like, we're going to make this one, like, a punk song. You're like, you know, because <laughs> I feel like yeah. that can that can be harder to, like, fit within those boundaries once you've set them. Yeah, yeah, I think once we start making a song, we're trying to like go with the character of that song and sort of be inspired by that song that we're making in that moment. What brings you to Western Mass? Um, so Zach and I grew up in Brattleboro, Vermont, and uh, and that and this was like the best music scene while we were growing up around there. So we would play down here a lot and we had a bunch of different bands. And uh, we're at stage in Burlington where we're trying to like limit the amount of shows we play there just because it's hard to bring out the same crowd like weekend after weekend and we love playing. So yeah, we've been doing the routes around. And Western Mass has a great music scene and always has in our experience. It's bounced back really well from the pandemic and it's nice to be able to stop by here. For years, the Western Mass punk scene has been supported by the community through basement shows and local venues. While these shows might seem intimidating, the community is very accepting and these shows are a place for people to express themselves in their own way. 
be sure to check out Robber Robber on their Spotify and check out some of the other bands who performed, such as Scud and Target Scammers. Thank you for watching Culture Shock. interested in BSU, please feel free to reach out to us or to come down to Mr. Lucy's room in the basement on Wednesdays. We meet once a week and in those meetings we talk about ideas we want to make happen. Events that we feel passionate about and all around make a safe space for black kids in the school to relax, feel wanted, and to let loose. We would love to have everyone else as well. We hope to see we you there next week. Next week.